Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I am sharing a longer video today with the different June 2024 Spellbinders Club kits of the month that I receive as being a part of the, I always feel silly saying this, but the Spellbinders Influencer Team. So I receive the Clear Stamp and Coordinating Die of the Month. I also get the Small Die of the Month the stitching die of the month, the better press plates of the month, the standard embossing folder of the month, and this month I was also gifted the deluxe caboodle bonus uh, product, which is a small cute little watermelon die set. So I am going to make a whole five cards for you today. Um, my last card does lose a little footage, but don't worry, I'm going to talk through that. If you have any questions, I feel like it's a pretty easy layout, so you should be able to figure it out if you want to replicate my card in any way. For the first card, I'm going to use my better press system, so I'm taking the really large tropical leaf plate. I think it's so pretty. I love the large leaves on there. And I picked four different Better Press ink colors. I wanted to create a tropical feel uh, just based on all of the vibes and layout and designs of all of these products. I thought just kind of a fun tropical rainbow would look really pretty. So I started with a yellowish green, moved into orange, pink, and then finally blue. I wish I would have blended a little better between the pink and blue and really also the yellowy uh, green and orange because I'm going to have some areas I'm not a huge fan of in my impression but that's okay we're still going to make it work. I was uh, told by a viewer to try using repositionable tape instead of like mint tape um, so my roller my dotted roller instead of um like mint tape or spellbinders tape to hold my paper in place when I'm doing a full panel. And it held up so great uh, through the system and also pulling off the top plate. Uh, my paper stayed in place and I really loved that. So great tip and thank you again. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not really thrilled with my impressions in some of the areas, so I'm going to save it instead of starting over because I wanted to try and add some green ink to it just to see if it would help with that yellow to orange at the top there. So I started with using Overzealous from Simon Hurley and a blending brush, and I'm going to almost completely cover the panel with it. I do leave a little bit of white in the center, so I try to make it look a little more heavier green along the edges. And then I went over again the edges of this piece of A2. Um, this is the cotton better press paper in, um, in white porcelain. And so then I went in with the later gator just to darken up those edges. I think it looks a little better still not exactly what I had pictured in my mind and in fact is looking very neon. <laughs> so I thought I would lean in a little to the neon and I added some splatter with kind of a reddishy orangey um, pearlescent watercolor and just splattered that onto the card and I'm gonna set it aside to dry while I um, decide on a sentiment. So I thought I would go with a birthday card because I'm in always in need of birthday cards. So I'm going to get the sentiment and the coordinating die out, but I am going to actually hot foil it instead of doing a better press Im impression. So I will do that a little bit later. So I knew I wanted to die cut the background and I thought it'd be kind of cool to create like a matted look with black. I just thought again leaning into that neon color vibes I wanted to add in some black. So I'm going to take some nested A2 dies and I'm going to cut my background uh, with the second largest of my rectangles and then I picked a smaller size to die cut another panel. And I'm going to do my best to get these centered so that way when the inner panel die cuts out of the outer panel, it will be centered and the design will seem cohesive across the card. 
Then I'm going to take the largest A2 rectangle, so it's A2 in size, and then the size just bigger than the smaller panel I die cut out of my better press leaves, and I'm going to cut that out of black cardstock. I also am going to use my sentiment as a guide of adding in another um, A2 nested die. I just want it to be big enough to have enough room to do some glimmer hot foiling and I ran that through my die cut machine and I'm going to use the two larger frames on my card so they're going to be layered with my tropical neon background and then that smaller rectangle I'm just going to use to do my hot foiling of my sentiment for the hot foiling I'm going to use my opaque white glimmer hot foil roll I have an A2 card base, so I'll go ahead and get that scored if I can get my edges lined up. And I'm going to start with layering my frames together while I wait for my Glimmer Hot Foil machine to warm up. So I'm going to start with the largest black piece because that is die cut with the A2 to make the outside edge of my frame here. I'm using my tape runner to add adhesive on all four sides of this rectangle frame and adding it to my A2 card base. Next I'm going to adhere the first outer frame of my tropical background. So again I'll just grab that tape runner, add adhesive on all four sides and adhere that to the card base. Also trying to center it and have an even black border around all four sides. For the next black frame, I took some foam adhesive, this is two millimeter thick, and added it to the back of this black frame and attached that to the center of my card base. And then I'm filling in that empty space with foam adhesive, the same two millimeter thick. And I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive just to the four sides of this piece of um, my tropical impression because it will attach to the black frame as well as that foam in the center. So now let's get our white foil. Again, this is the opaque white glimmer hot foil roll from Spellbinders, and I'm going to hot foil my sentiment with my glimmer hot foil system onto white, or no, using white onto black cardstock. So while I was doing all that, I cleaned up my desk. It didn't have the best impression. I forgot to add my little paper shim that I like to use for better press. So I'm just taking a white gel pen and kind of filling in the little, two little areas that needed um, their gaps filled in to make my sentiment look uh, like it didn't have any gaps. <laughs> and so now I'm going to add a little bit more foam adhesive. This time I'm going to use a one millimeter thick foam square so it doesn't add too much more thickness. And I'm going to add that to my card. I went more towards the top but center so it just feels like it's like sitting on the card. Wishing you a relaxing birthday. Again a little bit more neon than I had planned but I really like how the card turned out. It's just a fun way to use some tropical colors and create with this better press of the month kit. Now I'm going to move on to the clear stamp. Um, I'll let you take a wild guess on what previous character I stamped and die cut from this piece of white cardstock. This is alcohol marker friendly white cardstock. I added my key and keychain and I'm going to do the sun kind of sunny design for my keychain. And I'm stamping in a black ink that is alcohol marker friendly. I'm not gonna show my coloring today because this video is already gonna be over a half hour long and I didn't want to add another 10 to 15 minutes of coloring, but I did use my Oh Hoo Hoo alcohol markers. Um, I use mostly Honolulu Bees for um, that brand. And I'm gonna color in my key so it looks like a gold key. I went with a dark blue um, keychain and then I colored in the ocean and sun and clouds with some light blues, orange and yellow to create a fun um, sunny scene on that design. I use the coordinating dies to cut them out. Now if you don't collect coordinating dies, you can get the clear stamp of the month on its own. Um, as being part of the influencer team, I was gifted both the stamp set and the die. 
So I did color out of the lines a little bit, so I just grabbed a gel pen to try and hide where I colored out of the lines. And I'm adding some thin one millimeter foam adhesive to the back of this hexagon design and adding it to the area where it fits onto the keychain. And then I completely smeared that white <laughs> gel pen that I added. Uh, I'm going to notice it in a bit, so should have let that dry, but it's not too noticeable. I just tried to kind of wipe it off. For the sentiment, I thought I would go with a retirement card, so I did Hello from Paradise, and then I'm going to do Happy Retirement. And these also have coordinating dies, which is super great. I absolutely love when sentiments have coordinating dies. That just makes me the happiest person. <laughs> and I thought for the background for this card, I thought I would use the large tropical leaves from the Better Press set to do some hot foiling. And just like I did with my sentiment, I forgot my shim. So I'm going to show you my first impression with this green uh, glimmer hot foil and um, then show you the second time I do it. And it looks a little better because I remembered my paper shim. The better press plates are just slightly thinner than hot foil plates. So you may need a little bit more pressure when you run your Glimmer Hot Foil system with a better press plate through your Spellbinders machine. So you just have to play with your setup and see what works best for you in your machine. Um, and it's, you know, wear and tear over time. So I find that I just have to add a little bit more pressure for my better press plates when I run it through my Glimmer Hot Foil machine. So I had turned off my, or I turned on my Glimmer Hot Foil machine again because I turned it off after my sentiment. So I was warming it up for those tropical leaves. Um, so while that is warming up, I thought I would stamp my sentiments. So I have them with some white card stock and I'm using some blue ink. I love sentiments in VersaFine Claire's. So I went ahead and stamped those. I thought they would match the blue that I colored on my keychain the best. And I'll go ahead and use those coordinating dies to cut them out. By now my machine was fine. So I went ahead and ran my white cardstock through my Glimmer Hot Foil system to create my tropical leaf backgrounds. But you can see, I think I could have covered it okay with the keychain, but I cut another panel um, and it turned out much better with the extra pressure, but I didn't really like the blue on green and white. I wanted to add a little more blue, so I grabbed Clear Skies from Simon Hurley and Ranger, and I'm going to completely cover this panel. I was trying to match the kind of lighter tealishy blues in my keychain design that I colored in with alcohol markers. So now that I have my panel, I'm just trying to wipe off any excess ink off the foil. This is a water reactive ink, so I tried to add a little bit of water, but it honestly didn't really show much, so I didn't need to do that step, but just really trying to give it a fun paradise tropical jungle vibe. So I'm adding my sentiments so I know how I kind of want to have the layout of my card. I thought I would pop up my... Uh, keychain so I grabbed my two millimeter thick foam adhesive and cut it down to fit behind my keychain and key. I'm using the same thickness for my sentiments so I'm starting with the happy retirement. It was a little smaller so it can fit under the key next to the keychain and then hello from paradise under the key and other part of my sentiment. I trimmed down a piece of blue cardstock to be four by five and a quarter. This white panel piece that has the hot foiling ended up being five by three and three quarters. So then I will glue this panel to an A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So there's a white border around my blue border around my tropical retirement panel. And that will finish off card number two. I really like these leaves with the green foil. I think I might like it more than making an impression, but I definitely will be playing more with this Better Press set. And the keychain set I think is adorable and a really fun set to have in your collection. 
For my third card, I'm moving on to using the Deluxe Caboodle bonus die set. I did a ton of die cutting. I'm going to do a bunch of little watermelons in different colors and kind of mix match the rind. So let's just put one together and then I'm going to do the rest off camera because I put on a true crime YouTube video and just adhered all these little watermelons together and you didn't need to see me do the same thing. Uh, 12 times. So I added adhesive to the back of my watermelon uh, shape that I also used the little face and seed die cuts with and glued that piece to the black solid shape. So I just did the outline shape, not the detailed face when die cutting. And then I'm gluing those onto the larger kind of half circle watermelon shape here that has um, that I die cut out of green and there's a tiny little impression on there to be able to line up this white piece that I die cut to be kind of the blend between the rind of the watermelon. I think it's called a rind. I don't eat watermelon so but I'm pretty sure it's the rind uh, and the actual like edible fruit part. And then I thought it'd be fun to add some metallic glasses to a few of the watermelons. I think this heart shape is really adorable. And I just went with metallic kind of holographic just to add some fun to the watermelon. I wasn't sure what color I wanted to do for the glasses. And I think the holographic just adds a little cute detail. So I did that for 12 watermelons. I went from a dark pinkishy red color all the way to a light pink color. I wasn't sure what I wanted to layer them on and I saw this pack of gingham paper that I have in my stash and it kind of matches well with this teal colored cardstock. So I'm gonna die cut my sentiment, have a cool summer, which is from the stitching dies to uh, add for this card. And I'm going to add my watermelon to my gingham paper. So I'm going to trim down this background. I love a white border if you haven't been able to tell. So I'm going to trim this down to four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to use it as a guide to create kind of a grid of watermelon. So I'm going to start with the darker watermelon on the bottom and my lighter watermelon will be on the top. I wanted to create kind of an ombre look of watermelon. I also did in every other of the darker green and the light green. So lots of fun pattern colors going on here. So once I kind of have an idea of the spacing, I'm going to adhere directly down all of the watermelon without glasses. So I only have three with glasses. So I'm going to just glue down the watermelon that don't have glasses. I alternated between which watermelon lays on top of the other watermelon because my five and a quarter did not fit all three watermelons like side by side. They have to overlap a little bit. So I made sure anywhere where I needed to add the watermelon with glasses that they would be the kind of like the top layer of watermelon. <laughs> so once I get all of my other watermelon glued down, I'm gonna grab my one millimeter thick foam adhesive and I'm going to add it to the back of the three watermelons with glasses and pop them onto the card. So I have my light pink, I skipped the next color, I have my darker pink, and then finally my more red pink. So for the layer of the watermelon that are kind of that darker or the second lightest color, I am um, going to adhere my sentiment on top of that. So I'm going to layer another banner behind this blue cardstock just because it kind of die cut all the way through for some of the letters. So I wanted to add the cardstock so I could add foam adhesive on the back of this banner without interfering with the sentiment anyway. So I glued those two layers together of the banners and then I'm going to add that same one millimeter thick foam adhesive to the back of the banner and go ahead and attach that to my watermelon card panel. I think it looks pretty cute. It's a fun card for sure. And then I'll grab my card base and I will get this attached to my card. So this die set is only available if you purchase the deluxe caboodle set, which is every single 
club kit. So if you are a huge Spellbinders fan like I am and you need it all, <laughs> you can get the Deluxe Caboodle set for all the club kits and also get an exclusive bonus product each month. So for this month, it was this adorable watermelon die set that just is going to create some really fun summer cards. Um, at least that's what I think. For my next card, I'm going to do some stitching. So I definitely was a little bummed out <laughs> that I couldn't make the last uh, crafty live that my um, friend or crafty friend Lynn started over at LV Handcrafted on the first of the month. Um, it was on a Saturday and I just have a lot of plans on Saturdays <laughs> for Abigail mostly. Um, so I wasn't able to join, but I normally do stitching. So I did have an idea of what I wanted to do. So I'm including it for today's uh, video as well. So I die cut all of the ice cream details from the stitching die of the month. For my ice cream cone, it's kind of a creamy vanilla cardstock and I added some Distress Oxide. I know it's kind of orangey to use spice marmalade for an ice cream cone, but I really liked this kind of ombre orangey yellow thread in my stash, so I just wanted to coordinate those colors. And for my pink ice cream, I used Picked Raspberry again. I thought it would match the uh, ombre a thread or floss that I'm going to be using for stitching today from DNC. I think these are from DNC. <laughs> I've had them forever. So if they're not from DNC, you can definitely find similar threads in uh, different craft stores or online um, or use what you have. Like if you made friendship bracelets years ago and you still have floss. <laughs> so I'm using a needle and I am threading just three of the six strings that come in the floss. And I'm going to start with the cone. So this one's going to have the most detail. So I'm starting in one corner of the cone. Sometimes I'll add a little piece of tape to my string to help keep it from falling out when I um, start stitching. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of mint tape to the end of my string. And I'm going across the ice cream cone. This is the bottom of the cone. And I'm just following the details that are impressed into the die cut. So I'm stitching on the back, just going to the next hole and then going across the cone. So I'm doing that into one corner. And then I thought it'd be fun to kind of weave the details together. So as I go through the other direction, I'm weaving through the um, thread or string that I already have so far on the cone. And I'm going to keep doing that until I finish my cone on the bottom. I made a double knot on the back with both ends of my string and then I moved on to the top of the cone. And for this one, it's just going to be threading from the top to the bottom and then behind I'm just going to the next hole which is just right to the side of it and then going from the bottom to the top and they're just straight lines all the way across this top portion of the cone but I really like how it goes from kind of a darker yellow a little more orangey that actually matches the spice marmalade pretty darn well and then it fades into a lighter yellow or more of a cream color which is the color of the cardstock that I started with. So once I finish that piece again a double knot on the back with both ends of the thread and that will finish off the ice cream cone stitching. For the ice cream itself this has a um, one larger hole in the center kind of center of the ice cream scoop and then lots of little holes around so it's kind of like a sunburst or a starburst pattern so I'm just going through uh, one of the holes and then going into the center going to the next hole going through it and into the center and I'm gonna do this all the way around and again double knot those ends together trim down the excess and that will finish off all of the stitching for this project. So to layer all these together, I cut the ice cream cone 
like or ice cream shape on its own well and the ice cream cone shape on its own just to have something to kind of layer my stitching onto so I'm taking some one millimeter foam adhesive strips these are from scrapbook.com and they're one eighth of an inch thick strips and I'm going to completely line the edge of this cone piece and I'm also going to line where I think the ends will meet with the stitch details so you can see I can line up after I've pulled off all the release paper I'm lining up that bottom cone part so it sticks to the adhesive I'm adding the top cone part with stitching and that's just to create a nice base for my stitching so I can glue this down to my card base the small little detail of the cone I think overlaps just a teeny tiny bit so I'm adding liquid adhesive but I also still have some foam showing and I'm just going to add um, my last little cone piece using the foam adhesive and liquid glue to attach that I think it looks so fun I love the details of this cone like, like a lot I love the um, the bottom part like the weaving that I did and then the top I'm, I'm a big fan of this stitching die set and I'm going to repeat the same process with adding foam all around the edge of this ice cream scoop piece, a little bit in the middle for some stability, and I'm attaching the stitched detailed piece onto this backing. Again, it'll allow me to be able to adhere this to my card base so much easier than having to glue stitching details down. And then I added this little ice cream detail. I just thought it looked cute, so I added that as well. And I'm going to layer these pieces together. I realized that I should have taken that into account when adding my foam adhesive because I don't really have enough space or room to <laughs> make sure that there's no gap between my ice cream cone and my ice cream itself. Like I didn't want to like it was levitating above my cone. So I'm just gonna trim some of the backing off so I can overlap the front kind of scallopy details of the ice cream scoop over my cone and then I die cut my banner with scent with the sentiment again from the stitching die set and I die cut a secondary banner so I could glue those together again the impression of the sentiment did kind of cut through a bit so I wanted the second layer to um, keep it looking consistent across the card for the background, I used my spritzer to spray a piece of white cardstock and I ran it through my Spellbinders machine with the embossing holder of the month. I'm using the like deboss side. I flipped it over and I really liked the design for this card. So I'm going to use that to adhere to my A2 card panel. I wanted to trim it down because I know sometimes when you have an A2 piece of paper and you run it through an embossing folder, it will become slightly smaller than A2 because you've, you know, manipulated your cardstock with the impression. So I trimmed it down to be four by five and a quarter because I love a good border. So I'm going to attach this panel to my card base. Now my paper is still a teeny tiny bit wet. I was going to use my big tape runner here, but I knew it was going to rip and it just wasn't worth it. So I'm going to use liquid adhesive. Um, I was too lazy to get out <laughs> a bigger glue, so I'm just using my fine point glue. And I'm attaching this panel to my card base. So once I have that in place, I can work on a layout with my ice cream cone and my sentiment and also gives me an idea of where I can place my cherry because I didn't want my cherry to be too tall. So um, I'm going to make sure everything will fit. So I'll go ahead and adhere the cherry to the top of my ice cream. I'm gonna go with it a little bit lower. I'm not gonna have it sit like right on the very tip top of my ice cream because of that stem. It's a pretty tall stem. And I also added a leaf. I put the leaf a little lower than at the top of the stem. Again, I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough space, but here you can see it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna use my magnet to keep my ice cream scoop in place while I add liquid adhesive to the cone. And I will get that attached to my card base making sure to slide it under the ice cream so that way it looks like the ice cream is sitting in the cone 
and not floating or levitating above the cone. So once that cone is in place, I can just peel off my magnet and repeat the process with the cherry. I did add a little bit of foam adhesive behind my cherry for some stability, and I added liquid adhesive behind the cherry uh, stem, and I'm just going to press that onto the card base. So that way it's attached and I don't have to worry about it getting caught on anything. That will pretty much finish off the design, so let's just add in our sentiment with a little bit of foam adhesive. I just put it along the edges, and I did a three millimeter foam this time because I've got a lot going on of layers with the ice cream cone. I wanted to make sure I had enough space to add my uh, sentiment. So that's actually a three millimeter foam on the back of the banner. I think the stitching card turned out so fun. I like the uh, added texture of the embossing folder. Um, again, the stitching of the ice cream cone is my favorite. I've really enjoyed uh, putting together this card uh, with the stitching for this month. My last card is going to be using the small die of the month, the embossing folder, and I'm going to grab part of my sentiment from the clear stamp set as well. I will lose some footage at the end here, but I will show you most of what I did for this card. So I have a piece of kind of tealishy blue cardstock, and I sprayed it with my water mister and ran it through my embossing folder again. I did a lot of die cutting. I cut my little hippo out of some gray uh, cardstock, and then I wanted to make him a little flamingo floaty, so I die cut the kind of duck or swan floaty out of pink and black cardstock. I also die cut some details for the hippo, uh, the eyes and the little nose nostrils out of black cardstock, the cheek out of a light pink cardstock. And I also cut the eye of my, um, and beak of my flamingo out of black cardstock. So for these small little details, I'm not going to show you all of them, but I just added some mint tape to the back side of my die cut. And I am using liquid glue to adhere in these tiny little pieces. So for the nostril, the eye, and the cheek, for my hippo, I'm attaching them to the mint tape basically on the back of my hippo face um, using liquid glue to puzzle piece all those little tiny pieces in. And I'll do the same for the flamingo eye on the floaty as well. I'm going to take the floaty and you can stick the head of the hippo through pretty easily and you can glue the animal into the floaty. But I'm going to use the arms to kind of layer these together. After I'm done with the hippo, I'm actually skipping the feet because you're not going to see it in the final design. I added the eye and beak to my pink flamingo and here I layered the two wings together. And I'm going to add these cute little glasses to the top of my hippo. So just adding a little bit of liquid glue and using my tweezers to attach those like they're sitting on top of his head. Now my flamingo doesn't look very flamingo-y other than it's pink, so I thought I would grab my white gel pen and add a little bit of detail to the beak. I looked up a picture of a flamingo, so I hope it looks kind of like a flamingo floaty. So I'm adding white here to the top of the beak because it kind of fades from pink into white and into black so I hope it looks like a flamingo floaty. After that I'm going to work on the background. I want my hippopotamus to be kind of like floating in my water so I'm going to trim following the design of the embossed um, well the embossed design on this teal cardstock and I'm just going to use my large scissors to to trim this piece pretty much in half, not quite half, but pretty much in half. And then I'm gonna use Peacock Feathers um, in Distress Oxide to add in some shading. Now I am trimming down the panels to be four inches wide, but I'm not gonna worry about the other distance because they're going to overlap. And I'll make sure that when I attach them to the card, it will look like it is five and a quarter. So there's that white border when these are both attached to the card base, but I'm gonna add that Distress Oxide to the 
sides and top and bottom of these pieces and then for the bottom piece of the water I'm adding it to the top as well so all four sides of the bottom water and just the top and two sides for the top water so this is where I'm going to lose my footage but here I will add in a close-up photo um, I attach the top part of the water with adhesive onto my card base. I'm going to use some foam adhesive. I believe I use two millimeter thick to add the bottom part of the water, but I don't add foam adhesive towards the center top of the uh, panel because I'm going to slide my hippopotamus in his floaty so that way my floaty is sitting on top of the water. You can kind of see here um, so that's why I didn't add the bottom parts of my hippo. I added my chill sentiment, which is die cut from the holographic cardstock, and I stamped my sending sunshine kisses and birthday wishes from the clear stamp of the month and added that to the card as well. Here's one more look at my five kind of tropically summer vacation, retirement, just living that luxury life <laughs> close-up of my five cards from June 2024 Spellbinders Club Kits. I hope you had fun today. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and let me know which clubs you subscribe to. I'd love to know. Oh, and also let me know if you like seeing a longer video with lots of club kits or if you would prefer shorter video or just posts. I'd love to know that as well for the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.